Well, good morning, everybody. I do show it's two minutes after the hour, so why don't we go ahead and jump on in. Again, good morning. My name is Harry Singleton. I'm a customer success manager here with Skybits. On behalf of myself and the entire Skybits team, we want to welcome you to week five of the 2021 Skybits Training Tuesdays. All previous sessions are available on the Skybits YouTube channel. Please go check it out and subscribe. It's also available through the help section on Insight. Again, thank you all for attending. We hope that these one hour sessions will improve your level of understanding within the Insight tool in order to bolster your confidence in using our best in class user interface to its fullest potential. But today we're doing something a little different. This session is a panel discussion with the customer experience leadership team. Just a few housekeeping items before we jump in. We have muted all participant lines so we don't have any background noise. If you have muted yourself and want to ask a question at later on during the session, you must unmute yourself. We will not be able to do that for you. We have factored in time for Q&A. Uh, at any time, you can type questions into the chat and we'll ask them during the Q&A session. All sessions are being recorded and will be available for playback via the Skybits YouTube channel. Again, check it out, click and subscribe. So let's begin. So in the way of introductions, we'd like to open the floor to Ira Stern. Ira, would you like to lead everyone? Great. Thank you, Harry. <clears throat> and thanks for everybody uh, for attending. Uh, I know I've seen many of you on the weekly calls uh, as we go through these uh, ongoing trainings. But today, as Harry mentioned, a little bit uh, more of a special uh, environment. Uh, we've got Lisa Flynn and Elaine Smart on with us, uh, as well as myself, uh, the panel type of environment to answer questions and have an open conversation with, with the each, each of you through the hour. Uh, let me start by saying Lisa, Elaine, and I are extremely excited to spend time with you all today. Um, and certainly help provide you insight into the customer experience organization overall. Uh, kind of the inner workings of each, and then hopefully answer any of the questions you may have. Um, just a quick background, the customer experience organization within Skybits was developed with the understanding that our success is truly driven by your success or the success of our customers. To that end, you know, we were certainly looking back several years first to market in roughly around 2015 with a focus, uh, really a hyper-focus on what occurs beyond the sale. Uh, Skybits has invested heavily over the years to ensure the right level of skills uh, to best support our customers from onboarding and delivery of our solution within your business environment through to the ongoing support of our solution and the ensuring of the cadence and communications and ongoing support. The customer experience organization is focused on driving ROI with you or customers, ensuring you're getting the most out of your investment. The our customers are provided very much with a white glove approach, um, allowing you to really focus on your business and servicing your customers, while knowing you have a strong partner with, with Skybits, looking over the fleet of trailers and with your best interest at the forefront of the decisions made. Uh, I'd like to now kind of shift a little bit into each team within the CX organization, uh, let each leader give a brief overview of kind of what that organization does, uh, tools in place, and then allow for, you know, we'll jump into the panel and, and the QA. So, Harry, I'll throw it back to you for uh, quick introductions. Very good. So, why don't we lead off with, um, I think, the, the biggest question. Um, would you mind, all three panelists, sharing a little bit about yourself, your background, and what all your different teams can support? Can we lead off with Lisa, please? Sure, absolutely. Thank you very much, Harry and Ira, for the intro. Um, for those of you that I haven't met, my name is Lisa Flynn. I'm the director of our delivery services team. Um, I've been with Skybit for a little over five, five years. Um, started as a cus customer engagement manager myself, and now I'm the director of the team. Um, so if I, if you take a look at the, the screen that we're looking at now, I'm going to talk about the, the number one on the column on the left-hand side, customer delivery services. Um, so my team, I really can't say enough about my team. A amazing group, um, small group of folks, but really fierce. Um, we, we get our, our jobs done and really enjoy it. 
Um, so our team, what, what the delivery services team is really all about is, is our focus is, is typically on brand new customers that are new to Skybits. We're doing all of the training in terms of the hardware, the software, making sure your installs get done correctly, as well as specialty projects. So there may be, maybe there's technology upgrades, refreshes, add-ons to your existing fleet. So our team has those specialty projects as well. So kind of those, those two components is what the delivery services team really um, focuses our attention on. Um, I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail in terms of our overall project management um, of our project. So ultimately, we get a new project and we come in and we hit the basics of project management and really ensure that you have everything you need to ensure you are successful um, with all of your assets as well as the website. So we start out by making sure we truly understand your business needs, what are your goals and objectives, whether you're a brand new customer or you've been with us for five years and now you want to try out the new Connect or you want to take a look at the latest camera technology or maybe a reefer technology. So our team is able to come back and really talk about all of those features, understand those goals and objectives. We gather data from you to make sure we have all the information that we need. We identify and put together our training and installation needs, whatever that may be. We develop an entire project plan to make sure that we can support you. So that could potentially be training of your of hardware installation. So you might have folks on your staff, maybe it's your maintenance, maintenance team that is going to do the installs of the hardware. So we can provide training for those, uh, those folks, um, as well as on the software side of the house. We make sure that we get the system set up for you, your users added, landmark, landmarks added. Um, if it's a new technology that you're utilizing in the field, um, we'll do training on how the reporting elements work, how you can view the data, pictures in the system, all of those components. So the plan includes the training aspect. Um, we also will assist with the shipment of your hardware. So you may have 10 different locations that you're going to do installs at. So we can help with the coordination of making sure that you have inventory on the ground when you need it. Um, and then we'll also work with the installation planning. So it may be again that you're doing your own installs, but we can provide that support to you of, you know, where is my inventory? What's been installed? What locations are doing a great job? Um, and the, the other is true, we, do have, we have a vast installation network that we can tap into as well. And as uh, our delivery services engagement managers, we're able to do all that coordination with the third party um, with you. So we're able to coordinate what locations to send a technician to, best days and time, if there's COVID restrictions that we need to think about. So we do all of that pre-planning um, and ensure we have all our ducks in a row. And then um, we have that project plan. And then I think most importantly is the execution, right? Everybody has, it, you gotta have a good plan, but you gotta execute on that plan. And that's where the team really shines. So the team will work to ensure that your equipment is installed properly, whether you're doing it yourselves or a third party, um, do all the training that's necessary for that, um, in the field support as needed. Like I said, we'll actually do the software, the setup, the training. Throughout the entire engagement, we'll have progress reporting that will be able to show you, you know, the metrics of where you are. We can tailor those based upon maybe the, the metrics need to be different for maintenance folks versus field supervisors versus your um, executive level. So we can tailor those reporting metrics um, to make sure we're really showing the, the key um, components of the project. And throughout, uh, certainly we provide overall project management. So not only just the status reporting, um, milestone um, tracking, but also any risk mitigations, you know, thinking ahead, what are some impacts that you could run into um, and making sure that those are talked about uh, and identified and mitigation strategy put in place. So all of those things, we really, you know, work extremely hard to make sure that you are successful. That's the, the end goal of our delivery services team is to make sure that you have the training on the hardware and the software to make sure that you can install and successfully use the solution. Um, and, and so that, that's a very high level uh, kind of look into our delivery services team. Lisa, that's great. Thank you so very much. Um, Ira, same question. A little introduction about yourself and your team, please. Sure. Uh, Ira Stern, um, <clears throat> I, I've talked to probably many of you or heard through many of you through the uh, training sessions that we've held. 
but I manage the customer success team. I've uh, been with Skybits uh, just under a year now. Uh, been in the industry, technology, software, and all that for uh, well over 23 years. I'm excited to, to be here and, and kind of leading this group. Um, you know, the as I mentioned in the introduction, the customer success organization operates really with the understanding that you know you are customer our success really driven by your success um, you know we we do provide we are a small team uh, but we provide a single point of contact for our customers um, through the life cycle of your relationship with skybits uh, we're here to help ensure that you really get the most out of your investment by providing ongoing support and in, in various forms right training uh, systems, reporting, solutions, ongoing uh, meetings determined um, you know, by you, our customer, and, and the CSM as far as a regular cadence, uh, quarterly business reviews, data analysis, uh, trending reports, support, um, and you know, uh, benchmarking support. Uh, we proactively will work closely with customers uh, and yourselves to ensure that your operational goals and KPIs that you set for yourselves are met and exceeded, as well as helping you recognize a faster uh, ROI with the solution. Um, you know, we're here to help maintain the, the health of your fleet through the management of the solution um, and help you get through kind of mining through the data uh, that's available within the insight tools and, and other areas um, and, and really get the most out of that, that meaningful data. So, you know, we as a customer success organization are heavily invested in you, um, our customer, and your success with the Skybit solution. Great, Ira, thank you. Uh, Elaine, uh, same question to you, please. A little bit about yourself and your team, please. Great, thank you, Harry, and uh, thank you everyone for joining. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so my name is Alain Samar. I've been with uh, Skybits, not to date myself, but um, I'm uh, 18 years now with Skybits. I uh, love what I do. I uh, love the team, love the customers that we work with on a daily basis. Uh, so my team uh, is a customer care group, and we basically take over, you know, once the sales has been completed, once you guys are engaged in, uh, in utilizing the system with uh, providing support, any questions you may have about the product, any, any uh, issues or features you'd like to get uh, to know a bit more, or have um, difficulty maybe in uh, just learning the product a little bit more. Uh, we support uh, verification of installation also over the phone. Uh, my team's available 724-365. Uh, we're in the office uh, on the East Coast, so we support customers from 8 to 7, and after hours, we're on call and ready to help when needed. Um, there are, like, I'd say three main tasks that my team does, and one is uh, traditional customer uh, care or customer service, so answering phone calls, answering emails about your needs. Um, the next thing is uh, managing the RMA process. So, you know, along the way, as units need to be replaced, we um, support that process. Uh, and last thing, really, uh, which is important, is the, uh, the configuration of your devices. And that's all transparent to you, but as you purchase new product, uh, my team will go through uh, each orders and make sure units are configured the way uh, they were sold to you, so they provide the service and the messages that you're expecting from the devices. Um, so we typically handle anywhere between, I'd say, 1,500 to 2,000 uh, cases a month. Uh, we're a small team, but very dedicated uh, team of individuals that have been working for me, or with me, I should say, for, uh, for some time. Over to you, Harry. Awesome, Elaine, thank you, that was great. So thank you all, and also a quick thank you to everyone who submitted questions in advance. Uh, they've been very helpful in, in guiding the direction we'd like to go with these questions. So next question to Ira, could you let us know how the different teams make a substantial difference to the customers we support? Yeah, sure, Harry, thanks. Um, so I think there's many ways the customer experience team as a whole um, can make 
help make a difference for the customers. Um, you know, that ranges from ongoing one-on-one -on -one trainings to uh, and best practices on tools uh, to more broader training programs, such as the one we're on today. With, you know, with the Training Tuesdays, uh, you know, we help with providing data analysis and benchmarking to our customers through uh, the CSM team. You know, the again, the ultimate goal and the difference that we we drive to make with the customers that we allow you to focus back on your business and your customers uh, while you know knowing that we've kind of got got your back and we're looking over the fleet and keeping your best interest in mind. Hey Harry, can I add on to that as well? Uh, please go ahead. Yeah, I, you know I think Elaine made me think about it as as he was talking saying he's been here for 18 years. So round of applause for that which is amazing. Um, but I think that really goes to our team. I mean, our overall customer experience team between the three groups that are on the call today have umpteen years of experience. I mean, just looking at my team, you know, there's three or four folks on the team. We have 25 years of experience combined just at SkyBits together. Um, you combine that with the success team, the customer care team. We all know SkyBits. We know the product. We know the services. We know the offerings. We're all working out of the same office when we come back after COVID, um, but we, we all know each other. We've worked with each other for, for quite a long time now. Um, so we really bounce ideas off each other's team. So although we're segmented into different groups, we really work together um, to make sure that we're providing the best success that we can for our customers. So you know, relying on each other um, for our areas of expertise because uh, each group really does offer a specific element that really helps during the throughout the whole life cycle of the customer. Um, so, so I just wanted to kind of hit on that that I think our experience, um, not only at Skybits but previous experience um, of our employees, is really a big driver for us as well. Yeah, and if, if I can add to that too, um, maybe I'm going to brag a little bit here, but um, a number of folks from the other uh, customer experience team come from my team actually so it's a great learning uh, area where my team is exposed to every product that we have to support so it gives them uh, an edge really to then move into those uh, other uh, group like the delivery services group or the CSM group uh, and providing support as they get to know the product very well while working in the customer care group so there's a number of the folks and Lisa's team and uh, and Iris team that are from my team originally, and uh, I've grown into the organization. It's a great point. And it, it is a great point. I mean, it's it's it also shows the the width and breadth of of what this entire team can do. Uh, Lisa, a question for you. And thinking about you know specialties and recommendations and and best practices. What recommendations would you have regarding training of installers or maintenance folks? Sure, sure. Um, so installers and maintenance folks, I'd say the very first thing is to make sure that you have a plan in place. Um, rather than just jumping right in and giving, handing out training materials, have a good solid plan in place. I think that's a lot of what our team does as we start the project management process. So some of the things that we do that I would recommend to a customer as well is you know before you even start your training think about what are the assets that i'm going to be targeting what truly do i need to train my installers to be installing on are we going to have dry vans are they sheet and post um do we have chassis right because that's going to then dictate the type of training that those uh, folks are going to need so create that target list and, and identify exactly what needs to happen is it a brand new install is it a replacement so you're getting the list together to set your installers up for success. Um, I'd also recommend setting your expectations of the installers. So what do you expect of them? If they're your own folks or even a third party that you're coordinating directly with, you know, we highly recommend using the mobile app because that makes sure that you get the units um, activated and associated properly and it gives you that green check to make sure everything's good. So making sure that they have access to that. Are you going to ask them you know, that there should be a certain amount of installs that they get done in a day, in a week? Um, additional documentation that you want them to provide, right? So that's your checks and balances. Maybe they need to provide you on a daily basis a list of all the asset numbers, the Skybit serial numbers, and a picture of every install they took place 
So you have that check and balance in case there was a fat finger that your customer, I'm sorry, that your installer entered when using the mobile app. Um, also think about where are you going to need the installs to take place? You know, what locations? Are there limitations of where you're going to be doing the installs? Do you have a bay inside that people can use? Do you need to be concerned about weather? Um, are there any PPEs that folks need to be thinking about um, before they're on site? COVID restrictions. Um, do you have inventory in these locations to make sure that your folks can start to do the installs? Um, so I think there's a, a number of those things to first to look at. And then kind of secondary to that is now let me make sure I get them training. Um, we have a number of installation guides directly on our resource center. So if you go into Insight, top right hand corner is our resource center. And in there, you can find the hardware installation guides for all of our, um, all of our assets broken down by the asset type. Um, and in addition, we also have a number of videos for the installation on our Skybitch website as well. So that's a great way to go get some self-help um, to provide that data um, and information to your teams, as well as the mobile app. Um, so we have, again, documentation on our resource center that shows you how to use it. So all of those things, I think, are things that, that I would recommend. And in addition to that, those are all self-service options. The delivery services team can certainly always come in and assist with those types of um, the training. If there's training that's needed from your maintenance folks, um, we can provide that. Should you want to use a third party um, and coordinate with the third parties that we use, we can coordinate with those components as well. Um, so I hope that answers unless there's uh, more questions or things others want to add to it. I, I definitely think that addresses the question. It was great. Uh, really great info. Good insight. Thank you. Uh, Elaine, sir, a question for you. When, when we think of all of what the customer experience team can do, what do you think is the difference between our team and, and what we do uh, compared to a traditional customer service ecosystem? Ah, excellent question, Harry. Thank you. Um, well, I think we've talked about teams already a number of times, but uh, to me, that's that's the big differentiator here. So there's, although we're three teams, uh, there's there's a uh, th there's really a good uh, bond between these three organizations working hand in hand, and that's really important about sharing information, making sure that we're up to speed as to what uh, Lisa's uh, working on, so that uh, once it comes over the fence, so to speak, my team is ready to support that uh, new customer or that new product. So uh, in addition, and there's a lot of experience in the team as we just mentioned earlier, Lisa touched on that. Um, that makes, that makes uh, uh, you know, a great uh, asset to, uh, to you guys uh, as far as the experience that we bring to the table. Um, I often see the customer care team being a reactive organization, right? So we take calls from you guys as your need arise. You know, while the, the CSMs are more strategic, right? They help you with the planning and, and, and the long-term goals of your organization. And then we have the delivery services group, which are really a tactical, operational type uh, organization. Um, within my team also, uh, you know, we've implemented what we call email to case. So when you guys send us an email for a request for support, that creates a case automatically in our, in our system. And we use salesforce.com for our ticketing system. So this ensures that the case is tracked the minute that you send uh, your email into customer care. And this uh, uh, drives response time and, and uh, resolution. Um, some of you may have recently received a survey. So we've started to survey um, our customers after providing support because our goal is really to, you know, get to a best in class um, uh, support organization and your feedback is really, really important to us. And we've, we've been getting some great feedback uh, through the survey tool that we've used. Um, this year, we're going to move next step to implement uh, what we call a call to case. So in other words, uh, even before we pick up the phone, we'll know who's calling and can actually bring, you know, outstanding tickets from that uh, caller, that company, 
so the uh, the help uh, the agent taking the call has a better picture of what's coming up uh, on this call he's about to answer. So all these things, you know, we're looking at to always improve. Uh, it certainly impacts our response time and impacts our closure time for our cases, but with the goal always to get uh, or, or to get to a best in class uh, customer service uh, environment overall. IR, Lisa, anything you want to add to this? Yeah, so Elaine, I'll, I'll piggyback and I, I think you hit a lot of key points here. Um, you know, when I, when I think about how we differentiate as an organization and, and team specifically, it's, you know, we, we look at our customers, you know, as each person, each customer is as important as the next. And, you know, so when I look at the customer success from a customer success organization standpoint, you know, we, we have dedicated resources to to accounts, right? So it provides you a consistent person to work with. Uh, you know them, they know you. Uh, you're not just a, a customer or a number in a queue system that gets you know randomly routed and, and a call answered and you get your answer and move on. Um, you know, so from a customer success standpoint, you know, we really do offer the full engagement through the life cycle of your relationship with Skybits. We like to position ourselves as being, you know, kind of one point of contact um, so that, you know, you don't have to worry about who to call or when to call. Uh, you can simply call your CSM. They can route you or get you routed or get the right folks involved with the issue or solution that you need. Um, but we also, uh, you know, operate with the mindset that, you know, we want to get you resolution on whatever your question is or issue is quickly and efficiently. Um, you know, we do that as proactive as we can. So, you know, you'll hear me say proactive a lot. Um, that's a big differentiator in how the teams work. Um, you know, we want to be with you at the table versus behind you and, and trying to be reactive. Uh, we'd like to get uh, up front and ahead of things. Um, you know, so, and that, and that includes, you know, across different, many different things, right? So, um, trainings, holding meetings, you know, getting meetings set up on a regular cadence, uh, data reporting, um, working with you on operational KPIs and initiatives, um, you know, benchmarking, where, where do you sit, where do you stand in comparison to the industry, similar size fleets, that type of thing. Um, you know, setting up quarterly business reviews so that we can actually sit down with you and go over the health of the inventory, the health of the fleet, um, you know, point out anything you know, anomalies or outliers that we see, um, you know, and truly work with you in a, in a partnership environment versus being a vendor. Lisa, do you have anything? Yeah, no, I think as you guys were both were talking, it really resonated with me in terms of what you talked about at the beginning of the call, Ira, that, you know, we were really first to market to really offer this customer experience um, team and group organization to our customers. And we've been doing it for a while and we've gotten really good at it. You know, we've, we've added to Elaine's point, we're trying to consistently ask for feedback um, and continue to improve. So, you know, I think that gives us a, a big leg up upon our competitors that we've been doing it for a long time. We've had lessons learned, we've improved and we continue to improve. That's great, um, and definitely we we do have a, a kind of call to action term: uh, success as a service, and and very much agree that's what we do. So this is this is great. Uh, to touch on something that's rather topical, the upcoming 3G sunset, and therefore the necessary 3G upgrades. Ira, let me start with you, sir. Uh, if a customer needs help with installing units associated with a 3G upgrade, how do they go about getting assistance? Yeah, great, great question, Harry. Um, you know, we, we certainly realize that, you know, the looming 3G upgrades are <clears> the <throat> top of everyone's mind. Um, you know, let me certainly assure you by saying we are absolutely ready and able to support you as, you know, your initiatives once you're ready to begin those. Um, you know, from a CSM perspective, um, you know, we'll sit down and work with you, kind of map out a plan um you know so once you are ready to begin you know reach out to your csm or your sales team uh member um uh, more you, they'll give you more information they'll be able you know to help again lay out that migration plan kind of get you settled in 
see what, where you're at from an inventory perspective. Um, you know, additionally, uh, because this is a big uh, topic that is that is out there, uh, one of the training sessions that will be upcoming later uh, as part of this this session agenda um, will be focused on the 3G migration. Um, so it'll be a whole session dedicated to that. Uh, but I would say certainly, you know, reach out to your CSM, start the conversation. It is a, a you know larger undertaking. Um, you know, we still have some time, but we don't want to get behind the eight ball with time. And, and I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Lisa, as your team is involved here, um, do you want to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say, I'll take you back off of Ira. Um, you know, I talked just a second ago about, you know, kind of we've been we've been doing this for a while. It, it just goes the same same with this. We've gone through a 2G, 2G migration before, right? So our teams have the experience of, of what it takes and what it's going to look like for our customers. So we have those lessons learned. And that's exactly what the delivery services team can help with, right? Like I talked about at the beginning, we have all that project management component to understand, you know, what are what are the needs for your 3G campaign? You might have some trailers you're retiring, so they don't need a, an upgrade, but others do. You want to go with a new unit. We can offer training, support, um, installation support, third-party installer. So we're here um, to really help, you know, in whatever way that we need to. Um, I'll kick it over to Elaine because I know there's some customers who are going to be able to do some of these things on their own. Maybe your deployment's small enough, or you have the right staff on place. Um, that maybe you're able to just go to customer care. So uh, maybe Elaine, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the, the 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 experience you've seen so far with customers already starting their 3G migrations? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's uh, there's tremendous activity right now in the field, and uh, you know, I could say that um, I would probably in the past three to four weeks, our call volume has increased significantly, and I'm talking like uh, 25 to 30 percent. And that's uh, mainly due to all this 3G activity going on. So customers going ahead and replacing device, uh, whether they need our help to ensure the device has been activated correctly, or they're simply looking for help with uh, retiring the uh, 3G device off of their account. So uh, tremendous activity right now going on in the field, and uh, uh, certainly my team is ready to support. Awesome, awesome, very good. Thank you all. So to move from the the, the upgrades to another very common question our customers have: How do I how do I view and interpret some of the Skybits data that's available? What are some best practices? How do I get help with that? Um, Ira, let me lead off with you, sir. Sure. Thanks, Harry. Um, yeah, I think that it's a great question because there, there's a whole lot of data um, that is available through uh, Insight and the different modules within Insight um, that can really help with your with the business. Uh, what, I, what I'll tell you is if you have a CSM assigned, um, you know, I certainly urge you to talk with them reach out to them, um, schedule time with them, let them know what you're trying, what you're looking for, what you're trying to do with the information. Um, they can work with you very closely to show you how to get the data, where to get the data, how to review the data, and how to interpret that data. Um, you know, and they can do that repetitively as, as you need until you become comfortable doing so um, on your own. Um, if you don't have a CSM assigned, then you know, you can certainly contact uh, you know, the customer care team. Absolutely, that's that's a great little segue. Elaine, I wanted to ask you as well, understanding your team supports this. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, often it starts with a, a short conversation, right? Like, what's the problem you're trying to solve, really, from an operations perspective? Um, you know, early on in my career at Skybits, I did a lot of training and a lot of things I heard was, I can't find trailers, you know, how, how do I find trailers? And there's, there are simple tools on Insight to do that. So to my point, it, it, it starts, really the conversation starts with understanding your need or your, um, your business need really, and then what data can address this on Insight and then walk you through how to get to the appropriate feature, how to run the right report, 
uh, to get the data to get you going on your day-to-day -day basis. Awesome, awesome, very good. Now, Ira, you've talked about engaging uh, a CSM. A uh, question that has come up is, how do I know if I have a CSM assigned? Yeah, so thanks, Harry. So um, the CSMs are, are assigned based on need, um, you know, in, in requests from the salesperson. So you'll, you'll typically know if you have a CSM, the CSMs are very proactive in reaching out to yourselves, to the accounts. Uh, once you've installed, you know, and, and had the tracking units up and running, um, you know, typically they'll reach out, schedule an intro introduction call, you know, they'll help set up the meeting cadences, and you know, really ensure what you need to be successful. Um, if you're not sure if you have a CSM assigned or not, you know, certainly feel free to reach out to me, reach out to your salesperson. Um, you know, we can help verify that for you. Uh, if you don't, or if you your company, if your company doesn't have a CSM assigned, certainly you know, reach out to your salesperson. We can you know review the uh, request and you know see what we can do to help you there as well. Awesome, thank you. Now, all three of you have talked about your teams. I uh, wanna give you a chance to share a little bit more about your team. You know, uh, talk about the people if you'd like. What are you most proud of? Uh, let me lead off with Elaine, please. Thank you, Harry. Um, I couldn't be more proud of the team I work with. There's, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, there's, there's tons of experience in my team. Um, you know, although I've, train people that have moved on to other roles within Skybits. Uh, there is a core of folks that have been with me for at least 10 years, if not more. And I'm sure, you know, if many of you are calling into care, uh, you've spoken to Daniel and Leo and Cesar. You know, these guys have been with us uh, for quite some time and are, are really, really good at what they do. Um, you know, certainly 2020 has been quite challenging, I'm sure, for you as well in your business uh, due to COVID. Uh, but, you know, my team was ready to work remotely. I mean, these are things we have done over the years a few times a year uh, due to inclement weather. Uh, but, you know, we've had to work remotely now for uh, close to a year, actually. And uh, hopefully that has been transparent to you guys, right? You, you still call into customer care, and now the person's not sitting in an office somewhere, but he's at uh, his or her home office. Um, so we've, we've been ready to do this. We, we, we've raised the challenge, and uh, you know, hopefully soon we'll be able to get back in the office and, and resume uh, a new normal, probably. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier that the care team is, is really a special group of individual. I mean, these are things I really look for when I recruit for a new person in customer care. I mean, it, it, I've been doing customer service for my entire career pretty much. Um, and it does take a special person really to uh, uh, work in a customer care role. And, and by this, I mean, I mean, you're constantly working with customers that may not be happy, right? They're not calling just to chit chat or ask uh, what the weather's like at your place, but really they have a problem. They wanna get a resolution to their issue, move on you know, and, and, and do this very efficiently. So uh, it's really important to find people that, that do care, that love to help people. And I believe my team is, uh, is, is really, really good at doing that. And I'm really proud of them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I couldn't be more proud of the team I work with. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Ira, same question to you, sir. Um, yeah, so Harry, I think, um, you know, when I, when I think of the CSM team, you know, it's a, a small but powerful team, right? Um, <clears throat> we don't, we have six people um, that work across the organization supporting, you know, our customers and um, your, the team's background is, is pretty broad, right? We've got folks that have been in project management, you know, and have certifications there, um, training, software and hardware, uh, past customer success experience, data analysis. So our expertise is, is very broad. And, you know, the team, you know, not only focuses on our fleet customers, but they also focus across the Skybit's business. Uh, so, you know, they, there's other lines of business within 
Skybit that this team you know, really kind of steps up and, and helps support from a customer success standpoint. Um, you know, I, I would say the thing that I'm, I'm probably most proud about is just you know the ongoing dedication, the tirelessness that this team puts in on a, a day in day out basis. Um, you know, working with our customers to ensure that you know you, they're getting the most out of everything. Um, you know, in, in the way that as everybody has in the last year, really adapted to you know these virtual meetings, these virtual only you know face to face. Uh, you know, Teams, Skype, whatever it is, type of virtual meeting. Um, you know, and for for this team, who most of you who have had experience with the CSMs, uh, we typically see your CSM in the field in your office. You know, once a quarter, or you know, you know, a couple times a, a year. You know, it's been a, a shift there. So I think you know everybody's ability to adapt on the fly. Um, you know, is certainly something that I'm proud of. And you know, until we can all sit together again in person, um, you know, we, we continue to do that. So just the the endless tireless dedication from this team. Thank you so much, uh, Lisa. Same question to you, please. Yeah, you know, I feel like it's a bit of a love fest. I think we we all absolutely <laughs> love our teams. Um, I think there's there's no uh, no other other way to say it. Um, you know, I'll talk a little bit about background of my team. As I said before, you know over 25 years of experience just at Skybit. Um, like Elaine said, a number of folks started out on the customer care team, so really learned the ins and outs of the hardware and the system, um, have come to the delivery services team. Uh, folks have backgrounds with project management, training, implementation, hardware, software. Uh, folks on the team with their MBAs, with their um, customers, uh, certified customer experience professional certificate, folks in process of getting their PMPs, um, telecom experience, internet of things, software, hardware, uh, you name it. You know, we have a, a great background of folks and we really rely on each member of the team uh, to really help in different ways. Some are a lot more skilled in, in talking about um, specifics of an integration. Others are really great um, in terms of putting a, a solid project plan with dependencies together. So we really work together. Again, I think it's the same thing as Ira said, it's a small but years and, and really you know fantastic team um, the delivery services team has, has really been able to accomplish a great amount um, just last year in 2020 we completed over 255 projects uh, just with uh, it's just a, a handful of folks on our team we installed close to 100,000 units um, with our uh, third-party vendors and assisted our customers with those installs so you know, certainly done a whole heck of a lot. Um, a number of things come to my team that are kind of outside the general scope. Um, and my team is just always willing just to jump in and help. I think that echoes um, Elaine's point is that it's, it's hard to find people sometimes that really just want to focus on the customer um, and are customer passionate and, and want to see their customers be successful. Um, and I think that's really um, a big part of the delivery team. I too am extremely proud um, of the of the team and thankful for all their efforts. Well said, well said. Guys, thank you. At this point, I would like to open it up to um, our, our participants. Are there any questions from our attendees, please? No, no questions? All right. Well, if there is nothing else, I do want to offer a little reminder. Um, in order for our teams to ensure we're providing you with the information that's important to you and, and running your business, we'd appreciate if you could take the time to fill out just a survey uh, to give us the feedback. Uh, another reminder, uh, for those of you who are accessing the Insight tool on a regular basis, please remember that the help information is always available to you. It's there 24-7 in real time, and we've updated the help section uh, to include information like the Training Tuesday registrations, installation troubleshooting guides, current release info, previous release info, and the training and webinar videos are also available there, as well as uh, the Resource Center. So if there are no other questions, I want to thank you very much for attending our session today. Thank you very much to the to the panel, uh, Ira, 
Lisa, Elaine, this was very insightful. Uh, appreciate your passion, all that you guys do on a daily basis. Also want to thank all the attendees. These sessions are about you, our, our partners, and helping you leverage the powerful tools provided. If you have any recommendations or ideas for any future sessions or content, please let us know. We'd be very happy to put that together. Our next session is in two weeks, March 16th, same time, same place. Thank you very much for attending. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.